Heroes to me are the guys that I sweated and patrolled beside and bled beside and fought beside. I didn't know if our next move was going to be our last. But one of the things that I did know, if we die, we're going to die with honor. I, Roy Elrod, to solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It is the warrior, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is the warrior who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. He is the POW who went away one man and came back another, or hasn't come back at all. It is the San Diego and Paris Island drill instructor who saved countless lives by turning average individuals into Marines and teaching them to watch each other's back. According to regulations. And the uniform code of military justice. The warrior is the parading legionnaire who pins on medals with a prosthetic hand. He is an ordinary and extraordinary human being who offered some of life's most vital years in the service of his country and who sacrificed life's ambitions so others would not have to sacrifice their own. It is the warrior, a savior, a sword against the darkness, who has nothing more than the finest, greatest testimony to, and on behalf of, the finest and greatest nation ever known. So help me God. For 238 years, the United States Marines have served our great nation with unfailing valor, bolstered by the enduring fortitude of one another, their families, and their friends. This is why each year on November the 10th, Marines from all generations gather together in groups both large and small to celebrate the birthday of our Corps and to reflect on our proud legacy. With our fellow warriors and beloved families, we congratulate each other and honor all those Marines who have gone before. They built our reputation as the most disciplined and honorable warriors to ever set foot on a battlefield. We have triumphed in every battle because our Corps is always focused on iron discipline and combat excellence. 2013 marks the anniversary of several touchstone battles in our celebrated history. The 70th anniversary of the 2nd Marine Division landing on Tarawa, the 45th anniversary of the Battle of Hue City, and the 10th anniversary of the march up to Baghdad. I was fortunate enough to be in one of the most uh, extreme battles of the war, which is Tarawa. My, my one year in Vietnam was basically jungle warfare where we experienced ambushes, uh, fighting through the jungle, and suddenly, on my final weeks in Vietnam, we are fighting conventional warfare, building to building. It was just a, a, such a big adjustment for all of us. And they started breaking out, you know, grenades and AT4s and ammunition, and, and that's when it kind of sunk in. We're about to do something major. We loaded up and we drove to the outskirts of Fallujah. I was in the northwest corner, and I remember that berm, we all got online, and we're, we're looking down at this massive city with all the minarets. The circumstance required us to do what we were trained to do. You know, how we rehearsed and how we trained, quite frankly, we were just so well trained. 
the Marines around me that, you know, I love them because they trusted me. They trusted me to make the kind of decisions that were going to put them in the, in the place to win, no matter what the odds. What good leaders do is good leaders listen. They listen to their Marines. They may not be able to use all those ideas, but they listen to their Marines. In every contest of combat, Marines have been successful because of our ethos and our absolute determination. This is who we are. Marines understand martial spirit. The warrior character of our Corps has been hard earned by all who have gone before. And no matter the odds, today's Marines will continue to carry the day with distinction and valor. No military source ever considered the thought of a military landing against a heavily fortified beachhead and said it just couldn't be done. But the Marine Corps had slightly different ideas on that. When we walked in, we were ambushed, U-shaped type of ambush. They hit us from the front, from the left, from the right. And majority of my men, because I was the first squad leader, were either wounded or, or, or killed in action. The enemy, the NVA, had a machine gun. Our fire team got knocked down, we got them back in. Um, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this happen? And I remember my platoon commander, he's like, hey, Sergeant Funk, take him in. And I remember, you know, it's not orders. I jump up, you know, and I did the old, the old follow me. And I ran down that berm and everybody followed behind me in my squad. And we ran in, in HE, we started blowing holes in the buildings to make a foothold. When they started to send the boats in, a boat would hit the reef, drop the ramp, and immediately a shell would land in the boat and the whole boat would be blown to pieces and everybody in it mangled and torn and dead. And that happened for probably about 15 minutes of a row of boats all from beach one, two, and three, and they were being hit by these shells that were coming in. They knew exactly where the reef was. They zeroed in on it. They knew it, knew it perfectly. And uh, as soon as the ramp went down, it was a perfect target. All those men, 20 some odd men in the boat. We started getting our wounded Marines off the streets. Uh, we understood that we might get killed, but as Marines, that was our, our mission to, to help one another because if we were the ones wounded, our fellow Marines would do the same thing. Got the platoon commanders and the platoon sergeants together. Okay, how are we gonna do this? You know, from the back comes that Lance Corporal's Sir, I know how to do this. You know, sir, I can roll my 106 down the steps here of the Way University. So I'll turn my gun. I said, we'll fire that down the street. I said, sir, you know how big the round is. I said, that'll make them pull in their heads. And sir, you know the back blast? Hell, you can run a whole platoon across the street or more company if you want, sir. You know what? I didn't have a better idea. We know that we're walking in and the odds are not going to be in our favor. All we got to do is make the decision before the opposition is ready. If we can make our decision before they can, we're going to win. Tarawa put to an end any talk about not being able to land on a heavily fortified beachhead. It was the first battle to be able to do so since Gallipoli. And uh, from that time on, there was no more reluctance to force landings. And just what that Lance Corporal said happened. Boom, boom, boom. He rolled that out into the street. He turns his gun. Rounds are cracking all around these two young men. And they're not worried. The rounds are cracking and they're going to take care of it. They fired the 106. Well, it goes boom. That big round tore down the street. The back blast went up. We ran a platoon across the street, provided the supporting fires to, to Fox Company. Now, you know what that's called? That's called Lance Corporal Ingenuity and PFC Power. It's alive and well today. I see it everywhere in the force. I see it everywhere in our Corps, just like I saw it then. Marines who fought in these epic battles each made their own mark upon the history of our Corps. They passed a rich and illustrious legacy onto us. It's ours to jealously guard. It's up to us to make our own marks and thus proudly pass it on 
to generations of Marines that will follow. When you're asking people to, to risk their lives, you, you don't have to talk, you can't talk. You can't talk the talk, you gotta just step out there. You gotta step out yourself. If you're gonna, if, you, if I expect a Marine to my right and my left to follow me, I gotta, I gotta take a step. An effective leader doesn't uh, say, okay, we gotta get from point A to point B and we're probably gonna get shot at a lot. Y'all go ahead. A good leader, by the time he has it out of his mouth, he's already on the way and you're right there, right? step step behind them. The most important part of my job is to take care of the Marines, take care of their families, and make sure that they're doing their jobs, not just for themselves, but for America. Anybody who raises their right hand and willing to give their, you know, willing to uh, sacrifice, you know, their life to come over and, and go and protect their beliefs is a hero in my book. As I used to tell them, officers forward. Officers forward. When we're moving forward, the officers are forward. When we're moving back, the officers are at the back. We're the last, first in and last out. The intense valor, fighting, and victory that occurred in Tarawa and behind them and having to push forward occurred in Way. You know? And if you look at it, it occurred in Fallujah. And knowing of our history, we realize that that's, that's a legacy that we're part of. That first, we can't let that legacy down as individual Marines. But we also know that it's our job to build upon that legacy. As General Ron Christmas said to us so eloquently, it's up to us to carry on the legacy that we hold so dear. As we celebrate 238 years of defending our Constitution and the American people, Sergeant Major Barrett and I want you to know how proud we are of all of you. Because of you, gathered here tonight, our Corps remains strong, ready to respond to any crisis in any climate and place. Remember that America keeps an insurance policy, a hedge against uncertainty. It's called the United States Marine Corps. You are it, Marines. Continue to prepare for the next fight. Do great deeds and endure. Marines and sailors, the future of our Corps rests upon your shoulders. It's up to us, today's generation of Marines, to uphold our reputation and to keep our honor clean. Stay alert and stay ready. Happy birthday, Marines, and Semper Fidelis. And we went down a long axis of a column. And you could see at the front of the column where they were trying to come out. They were too slow. They were just too slow. And and it was and they were they were too slow because we practiced doing it fast. Or we got fast with our practice. And and to this day I thank God that we did. That's, that's how we survived, that's how we did it. There's just a lot of things that um, I appreciate now that the Marine Corps taught me and obviously it, it never leaves you. I'm still uh, rocking the, uh, the fade four months after I uh, getting out. This medal, as far as I'm concerned, stands for the metal of America. This stands for the strength of this great country and it represents the strength of the great military that has fought for over 238 years to maintain the freedoms that our country enjoys today. That's what rests within this medal and the men who wear it.